Our topic today is about arthrology or syndesmology. Arthrology is a branch of anatomy which deals with the study of joints and related structures. The articulation or joint is a site where the two bones or cartilage meet. Bones are held together by one or a combination of fibrous, elastic, or cartilaginous joints. The joints are classified by the number of bones articulating with each other. The simple joints is articulations with two articulating bones. In the compound joints, the articulation is more than two articulating bones. The arthrology structural classification. It is classified by their uniting medium into fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial joint. Example of the synatrosis are suture, symphysis, and gymphosis. Next is the amphitrosis or cartilaginous joint. It is the articulation united by the fibrocartilage and hyaline cartilage or both. Also can be slightly movable or immovable. Next is diatrosis or synovial joint. It is an articulation united by a synovial joint capsule. These are freely movable. Under this diatrosis are hinge joint, gliding joint, pivot joint, ball and socket joint, and more. Synarthrosis or fibrous joint is an articulation united by a fibrous tissue allowing little or no movement. Often, temporary joints that later ossify or synostosis. In synarthrosis or fibrous joints, it is capable of minimal to no movement. Their main function is to hold bones together. There are three types. First is the sutures. The sutures can be found among flat bones of the cranium. The suture is a particular fibrous joint between bones of the skull. Sutures often completely ossify in maturity. Next is the syndesmosis. Syndesmosis can be found in between two bones. Next is the gomphosis. Gomphosis is the specialized articulation of teeth in their alveoli or sockets in the mandible and maxilla. Next is the amphiarthrosis or cartilaginous joint. It is an articulation united by a fibrocartilage, hyaline cartilage, or both. Also can be slightly movable or immovable. The amphiarthrosis or the cartilaginous joint permits only limited motion. Function mainly for stretching or compression. There are two types, the hyaline cartilage joint or synchondrosis and the fibrocartilaginous joint or symphysis. The characteristic of the growing bone and are lost as the animal matures. An example is the union of the diaphysis and epiphysis of an immature bone. Its physis or growth plate is an example of synchondrosis. It's the fibrocartilaginous joint or symphysis. It features of mature skeleton and occasionally ossify with age. It is united by a flattened disc of fibrocartilage as found between the adjacent of the pelvic bones and between the bodies of adjacent vertebrae and sternebrae. Next is the diarthrosis or the synovial joint. It is an articulation united by a synovial joint capsule. These are freely movable. It permits a relatively wide range of motion. Motions that can take place at joint include flexion, extension, hyperextension, abduction, adduction, rotation, and circumduction. The saddle joint is a biaxial joint with the articular surface of the two bones concave in one direction and convex in the other. It allows the same movement as an ellipsoid joint. In the saddle joint, it permits all types of movement except rotation. Examples are the carpometacarpal joint of the human thumb. Another example is the interphalangeal joints of the dog. Next is the ball and socket or spheroid. It permits movement in nearly any direction. 
A spherical head on one bone fits into a cup-shaped depression in the other. Flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, rotation, and circumduction are all possible in spheroid joint. Examples are coxofemoral joint. This is the plane joint. It have only slight gliding movement between relatively flat opposed surface. These surfaces are called facets. An example are the carpals, small tarsal bone, cranial and caudal articulation between vertebrae. Next is a trochoid joint or pivot joint, one in which rotary movement occurs around one axis. An example is the atlantoaxial joint. The condylar joint is a convex articular condyle articulate with somewhat concave articular surface. They resemble with ginglimus joints but permit more movement. An example is a temporomandibular and femorotibial or stifle joint. Flexion and extension and a little rotation are permitted by such joint. Next is the ginglimus joint. These joints move only in their sagittal plane. The movements in this type of joint are flexion, extension, and in some joints like hyperextension. An example of this joint are the elbow joint. Next is the ellipsoidal joint. It has an articular surface that is expanded more in one direction than the other forming an ellipse. An example is a joint between the distal end of the radius and proximal row of carpal bones in domestic animals. Thank you for listening and have a nice day. Thank you so much for watching and this video is sponsored by Patreon subscribers. Join me in making more veterinary educational content in a creative way. In return, you can have an access to all of my vet digital files, including my scanned notes and digital layout on Patreon. Your generous contribution will give justice for all of my hard work, so I can have more time to create artsy notes for your enjoyment and education. Thank you so much again for watching and see you on my next video. I am Dr. Leatrice. I'm a veterinarian and an artist. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Bye.